This technique sample is going to show you how to add binding to your seam. Um, so to start with, we are going to use a one inch wide bias tape. So you basically need a long rectangle of fabric and the grain line should be on the bias edge. So it can be helpful to have a triangular shaped ruler and then that way if you know where your grain line is, you line up the edge of the ruler to the grain line. Um, and then you can just trace the down the 45 degree angle. That can be really helpful. So that's what I think I'll do right here. I have some marking pens. It's supposed to erase my markings. <laughs> okay, so that should be perfectly 45 degree angle. If you didn't have this triangle, you could still use a plain ruler. I love these rulers with the squares. And um, you basically, just have to tilt it so that your grain line is going up and down through um, one of the boxes and then you know your ruler's at a 45 degree angle. So different ways to figure out the 45 degree angle. So now that I have my angle marked at least once, I need to draw one inch wide bias tape. This ruler happens to be two inches, so if I just center it, and I love that it's clear so I can see the line that I drew earlier, and I can just use the edge. Okay. And I can go ahead and cut all of this out. Okay, so if you cut out multiple strips, you may notice you need to connect them in order to have one really long bias tape. And that can be a little tricky your first time trying to figure out how do I get these guys connected. So I like to place mine where, you know, I, like ideally I'd love them to be joined like this. I have the little diagonal line here. And then, um, and then what I do, I, I bring right sides together, so I flip it over. Okay, so now it's kind of looking more like this shape. Now, I cannot join them right on the very raw edge, right? I have to have some sort of seam allowance. Maybe my seam allowance is only a quarter inch. Um, so if it's a quarter inch, I would start, you know, I wouldn't be catching any of the fabric down here, right? It wouldn't be catching both of them until you're about here. And then once you're right here, all of a sudden now you're only sewing one. So it's a little tricky. So you wanna make sure you kind of align them, like scooch it over a little bit. So if your seam allowance is right here, you have two layers of fabric and you just go ahead and can sew all the way to the other edge where there's still two layers of fabric. Um, I'm just gonna put a pin in right now to kind of visually show you what I'm talking about. So if I stitch this guy, this were to be stitched together. Make that kind of flat so we can look at it. Um, you can see the whole way I have two layers of fabric being sewn together. Then when you open it up, you should it should be nice and straight along with the edges. Maybe it's a little clunky because of my pin, but I should probably put a hand stitch really for you to see it. Um, and then that way, you know, then this guy, you can trim off that seam allowance if you want or just iron it out of the way. Okay, so if you are going to use bias tape to um, finish your seam allowance, you wanna make sure that you have a wide seam allowance. Um, your textbook recommends minimum three-fourths inch to as wide as an inch and a quarter because um, the bias tape is gonna be taking up some real estate on that seam allowance. So um, definitely plan ahead for that. Um, and then it's the first step is to actually sew your bias tape right sides together to the raw edge um, of your yeah seam allowance. And um, it recommends sewing a quarter inch. So I'll take this to the machine. I'm gonna sew it one fourth inch from the edge all the way down. And the book says you can do it by hand or by machine. But it says one fourth inch stitch and then it wants you to come in and trim it to one eighth inch. Um, I always think, well, can I just machine stitch one eighth inch? Maybe it's a little rough and won't look nice. I'm not sure, but I'll leave that food for thought to you if you can sew one eighth inch or if you do need to do the quarter inch and trim it to one eighth inch. But either way, when you're done, we want one eighth inch wide little seam allowance. I suppose that if you did sew the one eighth inch, you would end up with a slightly wider um, bias tape. Not sure if that. You can always do the math to figure all that out in the end. But Okay, so I'm gonna take this to the machine. I'm gonna sew a quarter inch and then I'm gonna trim it so that my seam allowance is actually only 1 8 inch wide. Okay, it looks like I was able to sew the 1 4 inch and now I'm going to 
trim it to only be an eighth of an inch. Let's see if that's, let me slide this down. Yeah. Once you've secured the binding, now again, you should have sewn right sides together. I know a fabric that kind of looks the same on both sides, but this is the back side of the fabric, and this is the right side. Right here's the right side of my binding, and then the back side. Um, the next step is then to actually wrap your binding around the raw edge. Okay, so I'm kind of giving a little finger press right here, kind of pressing the seam allowance, this or the seam. And then when I wrap it around, um, I like to fold it just right over your uh, uh, eighth inch seam allowance, like so. Okay, now, there's more than one way to do this. What your book recommends is now on this side to actually give yourself a running stitch right in your binding. So in my case, this like purple fabric, pretty close to my um, seam line so that I can secure the back of my um, bias tape. And then when I'm done, if I hand stitching that all the way or even machine stitching it, then I would actually trim this raw edge that's only a quarter of an inch raw edge. So you'll be left with a raw edge at the end of the day, but it's covering your seam allowance because this is later going to actually be a seam here. <laughs> so there will be raw edge on the back side of your seam, but it'll be cut really short and it shouldn't fray and be hidden. So that is a common way to do um, the, the bias tape. Um, another way that some people like to do, especially if you have sheer fabrics, is instead of just leaving it flat, they will fold under the raw edge and then secure it this way so that there is no raw edge and still do the running stitch along the top to secure it all. Um, so this method, it's good because you don't have any raw edge showing, but the downside is, is that it's going to be more bulky. So if it's important to you to have your seam lay flat and be less bulky, you'll want to just wrap it around the raw edge of your seam or yeah, your raw edge of your actual garment and um, go ahead and stitch it straight and then trim it. So that's the method I'm gonna do for this one. So I'm gonna go ahead and pin this into place and then I will take it to the sewing machine. I'm not feeling like hand stitching today. Okay, and I like to put my pins in perpendicular from my stitch line so that it's really easy to pull out of the machine. Okay, great, so now I'm gonna go ahead and give it just um, a running stitch starting up here all the way down pretty close to my seam. Okay, you can see I have my running stitch. Make sure you can zoom in on that and see it pretty good. So it's um, catching my raw edge, it's catching the back side. Um, looks like I had a real messy back stitch on my machine, not sure what happened there. And then find some scissors um, that delicate enough to trim it. Um, about a quarter of an inch is what the textbook recommends. And you know we shouldn't have to worry about this fabric you know, unraveling or fraying too much because it will be hidden since this is, is designed to be um, the seam allowance. So it would be, it might possibly be busted open. Okay, so. Yeah, so I mean this guy would get sewn to another piece very similar and this is the right side of the fabric and the seam lines like right here you know once it gets sewn to the other half then the inside of your garment will look like this imagine it mirrored and then that way the raw edge it's kind of hidden on the back side of the seam allowance so it really shouldn't fray and it's used in couture and People are happy with it, but if you are worried about your fabric fraying, you can always fold under your 
bias tape once more so you don't have the raw edge, but then you'll just be stuck with a bulkier seam. So you'll have to weigh the pros and cons of that. Okay, so finished garment on the outside. We do have some sheer fabric today. Um, and then the inside, again, just your seam allowance, but the raw edge is hidden. Um, it has been bound with some bias tape. This is actually raw edge on the bias tape, but because it's trimmed so well, it really shouldn't be a problem unraveling. Um, and that is the bias tape technique sample.